Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to solve one problem in one language, BQN, two different ways. We're going to start off explicit, and then we are going to convert our explicit solution to a tacit solution. So the problem is problem two from the Perl Weekly Challenge number 333, which is as of recording just over a week and a half ago. The problem is entitled Duplicate Zeros. And it states that you're given an array of integers. Write a script to duplicate each occurrence of zero, shifting the remaining elements to the right, and the elements beyond the length of the original array are not written. So in our example here, we have 10230450. We're gonna duplicate each of the zeros. So the first zero becomes two zeros, the second zero becomes two zeros, and the last one does as well. But then we truncate the length of our duplicate zero array to equal the original length of the array. So the five and the last two zeros end up not being in our final array. Pretty straightforward to solve in an array language like BQN. So we're gonna hop over to BQN pad and solve it there. So we've got a couple test case below that you can see. Our first one, 103, we're gonna duplicate the zero so that we end up with two zeros in our solution and then the three is gonna get truncated. So the first thing that we want to do is start with an identity function that just gives us back our initial array. Then we want to identify where the zeros are. So we can do that with a zero equals, and that is gonna give us a Boolean mask where the ones correspond to where the zeros are. And after that, what we wanna do is we want to come up with a mask which we can use to replicate the values. So we want to replicate all non-zeros just once, so we're just copying those values, but we want to replicate the zeros twice. So if we take our Boolean mask and just add a one to that, that's gonna give us the mask that we want. So everything that corresponds to a one is a non-zero value that we are going to just copy once, and then all the zeros are gonna get copied twice. And then we have access to a primitive function in BQN and most other array languages called replicate. And with replicate, we can basically just provide a mask. So we'll start off by doing it this way. If we parenthesize our mask now, on the left is our mask, and then on the right is our array that we want to replicate. You can see now that Everything below where there was one zero, there are now two zeros. So this is a nice way to solve this problem. I'm actually gonna go to the slightly shorter version, which is basically commuting the replicate operation. So this is the swap or commute modifier, which basically switches the order of arguments that you're passing to replicate. And that allows us to avoid the parentheses on the mask and just keep it on the right. From here, we need to truncate any of the elements that are now past the original length of the array. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the length of the array, which we can get using length. And right now we are just pairing this length with the duplicate zero array. But now that we have the length, we can just replace this pair with a take. And that is gonna be the explicit solution for solving duplicate zeros. And so now, how do we convert this to tacit? And the reason I wanted to make this video is because if you are a beginning array programmer, this is a little bit trickier because we have three different instances of our argument x. And for those of you that don't know, a tacit solution is a solution that doesn't mention any of the arguments, in this case, our double struck x. So we want to create a solution that doesn't have a reference to x here. So we're gonna do this step by step. The first thing we wanna do is we want to make this entirely tacit, and we can do that by creating two different trains. So this forms a three train, AKA a fork, AKA the phi combinator from combinatorial logic. And when we add these two, this is gonna turn our three train into a five train. And so now this part of our solution is tacit or point free. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna get rid of this X. And so what we can do is we can delete this, delete this, delete this, and then move our replicate over here and combine this with the sigma combinator. 
And now we've gotten rid of one of our references to the double struct x, our argument. And so this basically is saying this is actually the equivalent of a fork or a phi combinator where the right tine is set to the identity function. So this is just an alternative way of spelling this, but it avoids some parentheses and is one character less. So make use of the sigma combinator, aka the backhook, aka before. A lot of names for these things. Check out combinatorylogic.com. Link in the description if you'd like to learn more. And then last but not least, we have essentially here a unary function, another unary function, and a binary or a dyadic function in between. So in order to make this tacit, we delete this, we delete this, and now we just get rid of our braces and we're left with a very beautiful tacit solution. We can even go one step further because parenthesizing a single primitive does absolutely nothing. Get rid of this and we have our tacit solution. Very beautiful, almost half as short as our explicit solution. To walk you through, once again, all the combinators being used in this tacit solution, our first combinator is the three train, aka the fork, aka the phi combinator. And then when we add the one plus, we end up with another fork, aka a five train in this case, because we're adding one and plus to our three symbols in the original three trains. So a three train leading to a five train, which is two forks, one on top of the other. And then we're making use of the sigma combinator, which is the pink back hook over there. And finally, we have our final fork. So three forks and one sigma combinator, AKA three phi combinators and one sigma combinator. Absolutely beautiful folks. And this brings us to the end of the video. Two different solutions, one problem, one programming language, BQN, a tacit solution, an explicit solution. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. If you have comments or questions, feel free to leave them down in the description below and have a great day.